Okay, so the latest example of a worm style power bar. So you might have seen this kind of power bar in games like R-Type uh, back in the day. Um, it makes me think of worms when you charge up the bazooka, so that's why I called it a worm style power bar. Um, I wanted to talk through the script. Uh, it's a little bit longer than some of the uh, learning modules on the site, so I wanted to go through um, the ins and outs of what that does, uh, despite the comments that I put in the script. So in the example scene that I've got here, I have a cannon, which is effectively a parent object with a collider and a rigid body on it. Um, and within that is the model itself and an empty object uh, to make spawn position. So basically where I'm going to create the cannonball um, and particles and other stuff that comes out of it. The actual script itself um, is on this power bar uh, because it addresses uh, the GUI texture directly. So I made a GUI texture object uh, with my power bar on it. Uh, my power bar is simply uh, a 200 by 20 graphic made in Photoshop with a simple gradient on it. And the bar itself um, is therefore directly written to by the script. So other references to things like the spawn position uh, are done using this sort of drag and drop uh, method of assigning a transform to it. So looking at that script let's take a look at what it does so I've created an abridged version um, that's simply uh, taken out all the comments so that's what you're looking at here so the other version there um, a lot more long-winded but to make it simpler to read here no comments so the first thing I've established is this var full width uh, which is a floating point number um, of the width of the bar so if I changed it out for a different graphic um, I've left that um, as public so that I can go back to it and alter it in the inspector uh, if I wanted to. So once I've done that I create several private variables. Current crates is a game object uh, which is going to store my um, uh, particular prefab that's recently spawned of the crates um, which is created down there, drag and drop. Um, then I've got a power number that's um, basically how much power has charged up uh, and that's added to with time. I've then got an increasing flag and a shooting flag. So when it's currently charging up and when it's currently doing a shot. Um, and I use those to um, start increasing and stop increasing and also to uh, stop it firing whilst it's shooting. So I have that flag uh, set to true whilst it's, whilst it's doing the shot. Then I have bar speed, um, which is effectively how quickly that bar increases. Um, just a, a pretty much a visual thing or a gameplay uh, related thing. And again, because it's public, uh, I can go in uh, and tinker with it um, in my in my um, inspector if I want to. Then I've got uh, a slot for the ball to drop onto um, the cannonball itself prefab. Then I've got a particle emitter, um, which I've made um, just some stars for the shot of the cannon. I've got a light, uh, which I can instantiate uh, just for a split second um, to create kind of a uh, burst of light when the, the cannon fires. I've got a um, slot there for the spawn positions transform. So that's that additional object here. And I refer to that. And then I've got shot force, which is the amount um, that the uh, cannon fires with. So it's a kind of a, a multiplier uh, of force to add in addition to um, the actual force gotten from the power bar. And then I've got cannon blast, which is just an audio clip. So in the start function, I'm setting up a GUI texture pixel width, uh, pixel inset width set to zero. So the bar is reset to nothing so it's not left over from any previous go or anything like that. Then I've got a variable called some crates uh, which is a game object which instantiates a prefab of uh, three column stack of crates and I've worked out the exact world position I wanted that to go so I'm literally passing that in with x y and z coordinates from the world and the same uh, rotation as this thing um, being as it is uh, not rotated at all. Uh, and then I set current crates equal to uh, the variable containing the crates I've just created. So what I'm doing there is allowing myself um, a private variable 
this one, current crates, that stores the information on uh, the crates I've just created. So I can grab those crates later, delete them, and create a new stack of them um, so that the player can have another shot. Um, so instead of, of finding all of those crates um, and deleting them, I've just, when they're created, passed them into a different variable. So then in update, I check that I'm not currently shooting and that the jump button is pressed down. I start to play uh, the sound assigned to an audio source on this object. So this object has um, an audio source and it's got this file which is just a, a single monotone sound on it. Uh, and I set that to loop. I've unticked play on awake so that it doesn't start um, without the player pressing down the jump button. I then set increasing to true as well. So as soon as increasing becomes true, I start adding to the power variable and multiplying by bar speed. I then clamp that to the value of um, itself at the moment um, and zero and then clamping it to full width. So full width is 256. So it will go between zero and 256. And then I set the actual GUI texture itself to have that particular width that we've put into the power. So it will add to it, but the clamping is stopping it going effectively outside of the bar. And then I set the audio um, source's pitch uh, to a value that's equal to the power, but I'm just using uh, division there to uh, sort of diminish the effect of it. Okay, so the number generated in the power is too high, um, so I kind of stepped it down a few notches simply by dividing by 30. So um, when the jump button is released, I then stop increasing and I call this custom function I've made called shoot. Now, you might wonder why uh, increasing is a separate uh, element of update. Why not put all of this information into uh, get button down? Now, the reason for that is that get button down um, effectively returns true on the first frame uh, that it's occurred. It's not going to uh, keep repeating, so to speak. So we simply just pass in another if statement and we check if that's true. And if it is, then we do all of those things. So just a quick way of using a Boolean just to create that effect. So when they release jump, like I said, um, we call this shoot function and we're passing the variable, the power, which is being assigned down here, into the shoot function. And the shoot function has a single argument called power which is uh, a floating point number, same as the power itself. So we can pass that number into shoot. So we set shooting to true, which is stopping both of these from refiring. You can see it has to be not shooting, hence the exclamation mark there. Uh, and then we create a particle blast. So whatever I've assigned to blast part, um, we set that at spawn pause, um, position and rotation. So spawn pause, remember, is uh, something that I've drag dropped uh, a transform to up here. And then I also create uh, a light um, and I use uh, the power variable, again step down with division um, to alter its intensity and range. So a small shot with a cannon will be a small intensity and range, but the biggest shot will create a really big burst of light. I then destroy uh, that object, so I've passed it into a variable name called can light. Um, after 0.1 seconds, so just a tenth of a second uh, blast of light uh, from that. So the destroy command uh, is finding the light dot game object. So bear in mind I've data typed that to light. So to actually destroy the whole thing, I have to say dot game object. Otherwise, it will just remove the light component from that object. Okay. So remember, destroy can be used to remove um, components as well. Then I uh, stop the audio from playing, so the audio of the pitch building up uh, needs to stop, so by just saying audio I'm referring to the audio source component on this object, and then I spawn a new audio object by saying audio source dot play clip at point cannon blast. So audio source play clip at point will spawn a, a new audio object separate from this one, um, but we've done it at the same position because I know I've got um, an audio listener on this, so it will be um, just as loud because it's effectively in the same place. So that's the cannon blast sound. 
then what I do finally is the actual um, business of, of shooting the thing, uh, which is to grab a forward direction uh, of spawn pos. So I say var fwd is of type vector 3 and is equal to the forward direction of spawn pos. And I then um, instantiate the prefab of the cannonball, which is in a variable called ball, at the position and rotation of that spawn position. I then add a force um, in the direction of forward multiplied by power, um, so the, the value that's been sent into this, and then also multiplied by shot force. As I said earlier, it's just something to uh, give it an extra kick because between 0 and 256 uh, isn't necessarily enough uh, in terms of rigid body forces. Um, I then destroy that cannonball object after 4 seconds and I'm also waiting 4 seconds so that's not a total of 8, they're both occurring after 4 seconds so this is called immediately um, and this is called immediately after the destroy command uh, therefore they both occur uh, after 4 seconds. So um, after that pause happens I reset the width of the GUI texture so that the bar goes back to 0 I reset my the power variable I then destroy the current crates that have uh, presumably been knocked over and then I instantiate a new stack of crates the same as I did up in the start command again setting current crates to the crates that I've just made then finally I set shooting back to false so that this can occur all over again and that's how the example works um, that's pretty much all uh, you should need to know to get it going um, but just to see that's that's what I've got set up there